Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, welcome to the stream. Uh, this uh, is going to be fairly short. Uh, I promised uh, a couple of viewers or a couple of friends that I would show them what I do when it comes to fresh chips. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. One is to search out the uh, beacons with the orange bean that's coming out of it. Uh, build a bypass chip. Um, and then uh, search transmission, you'll get beacons, you get observatories, and you get the odd transmission tower. Uh, I did that for a long time, but what I decided to do was that I would start looking for something um, a little a little easier, something more enjoyable. So I first of all try and find a monolith, and once I've found a monolith, uh, you'll notice when you answer the question correctly, the disk at the bottom of the monolith will actually shift. Uh, and there'll be a line, it'll move from one side to the other and then I fly in the direction of that line and that'll take me to the next monolith in that spiral and as I'm doing that uh, I come across these which uh, this is what we're after so this is a Korvac one but the Geek and the um, Viking ones are very similar, they've uh, got the long, the, the big tower on them. Um, they're either on their own or they're with a base. So this full base, that's the observatory, that's the transmission tower, sorry, observatory there, transmission tower there, and a landing base there. So let's go and have a look. This is my ship. Uh, so I thought we'd start with um, the way I make things up. So I have um, one of the shield boosts not on my exosuit, so it gives me plenty of space. Each one of these spaces will take 250 resources or one unstackable component. I normally try and run with two Vortex cubes. Um, I normally have uh, the two um, other, not these um, neutral mods, there's another one that's the square one and some resonators. Simply if I come across a crash ship or if I'm um, travelling through black holes and I destroy one of my warp reactors I can repair it straight away and carry on. Uh, I usually run with a fair amount of thymine and plutonium here and a few extra warp cells. On my ship um, I have double stacks of the plutonium, the heridium and the crystalline because that's what you use a lot of to repair stuff. Uh, and I run with one stack of these two, nickel and copper. Two stacks of aluminium, emerald, gold and iridium. Uh, so it's a thousand of each. I just find it's really easy when you come across a ship that, and you want it, you can repair it immediately. Um, and you, then you can carry on um, to another crash ship and destroy that one to get the bits that you're missing or to a base to buy the bits that you're missing okay all right so what's next let's go and have a look we have a multi-tool in here which we don't want because we finally found the last one that we're after only 23 slots. I have all the multi-tool technology so I don't need that. Uh, in here I'll probably just look to see if there's anything that I can um, either increase my health or my knowledge of the language. Observatories will only give you um, any of the um, monoliths or the ruins or um, plaques when you search with that facility. So these are a guaranteed pressure. So in here we have the standing, which we want. We have the health, which we just want to check. And then you have this little sucker. Once you've done a lot of crash ships, uh, you know all the sequences, so um, they're all pretty easy to work out. Uh, so we'll go with 29. It'll give me a distress signal. 
When you're looking for crash ships, you'll always get one that's either the same, one less, or one more, depending on what level your ship is. So, very seldom we get something that's a lot worse, and very seldom we get something that's a lot better. Okay, another little uh, trick to be aware of is when you search with that orange beam, um, and you're searching for either a monolithic settlement or a transmission tower. It could send you to um, somewhere you've already been, or it could send you to the place that you're actually at. If there was one here, it might send me here. The reason for it is because this sucker here is still turned on. So a lot of the places you go, particularly crash ships, this is how I learnt. Um, I went back to the same crash ship three times in, on one planet, and it was simply because I'd left this turned on. So turn it off, and this is not discoverable discoverable anymore. Okay, so we have a crash ship over there. Crash ship is six minutes away. Let's go let's have a quick scan here first make sure that I need one more of the species. It's lurking somewhere. And I know it's a land animal. The reason I know it's a land animal, if you're not aware, is that when you look at your uh, species, this here is the number of species that you need to find. Um, and it starts off with land, then sky, then cave, then water. So um, I know that these two are sky. And I know that one's land, so I know that there's, um, sorry, those two are water, that those two were sky, so I know that everything else is going to be on the land, either in a cave or not. And because it's a land animal, I know this one has to be a land animal, if that makes sense. Right, it's not there. Let's go find this ship. I think I have more than one crash ship marked now. Or not. There it is, 47 seconds. The other thing I do is on the way to this crash ship, uh, if I come across another transmission tower, I will um, get that crash ship up as well. Okay, and here she is. It's pretty close. Uh, first thing I do when I get here is turn the light off. So don't forget. Uh, have a look at the damage machinery. And I'll look at this, just for speaking. And then I'll have a look at the ship. It's only 47 slots. So if um, I wanted this ship, I would um, compare them. And just for example, if that one is full, um, what it does is when you're transferring goods, it stacks them from uh, left to right by row. So you would start transferring from here and then along here directly to the ship so that they're all in the same order if you're a bit anal like I am and then I would start to, before I hit accept, I would then go and destroy all of this technology if I knew I was keeping this ship. I'd accept it, um, I would repair what I can with what I have in my exosuit, uh, which is why I carry all those components in my exosuit. Um, so this is telling you what you would need, so I, I have enough to repair this ship I think. Um, but obviously as you repair one thing your resources go down so once I've done that then I would run back to my old ship and I would just ex um, do the compare and accept straight away and then I would move um, 
the um, the items that I don't carry on my ship, I would move those away. So the um, the vortex cubes, the gravitational balls, all that type of stuff. And then when I come back to this ship, I would transfer any of the green or blue items because they'll stack in here if I've used up um, used them up. If I haven't used them up, then I don't need them anymore. I hope that makes sense. I find that to be a very efficient way of doing it. Unfortunately, I've got the probably the ship that I will keep for a long time now. There's only one more version of this ship that I'm looking for, and it has the the big sort of um, bits on uh, rocket boosters on the side, and it's not as wide. So, other than that, I would keep that. That's what I do with chips. Um, and that trick with monoliths, just look at the disc to see which direction it's in. If it's the first uh, monolith you've come across, then um, you can go either way, um, backwards or forwards. So I hope you hope that all made sense to everybody. That's where I've just been. So I don't need to go there anymore. And now it's just a matter of uh, looking for a monolith or just flying around looking for looking for anything that I was after. Um, usually I'd have a couple of um, I'd know where the next monolith is because I would have done that at the observatory so I would have somewhere to go and start the whole process again. Monolith to monolith, learning the language, um, picking up the odd crash ship while I go. Um, because I have all the resources I need and everything that I need, there's not much I need to do on this planet anymore apart from find that one last um, species. So what I would, what I'm going to do is look for a monolith. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll go back to that other place, go to the observatory, find. Um, um, and hope that it's going to give me a monolith and if it does, or a ruin, then I normally find that that's where you will locate uh, the the beasts, they seem to, once you've answered the monolith, they seem to sort of turn up pretty quickly. We have another transmission tower here, look at that, see, just randomly found. The M-Site passes and then going to a beacon and continuing to do it that way. So that, um, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, Wizard, I hope it's, uh, it's probably the same as what you're doing now, but I just I did say that I would put something up. And for anybody that's watching my YouTube channel, um, you'll find the information or a copy of the video there. Cheers and thanks very much guys.